Last Dog. Also in the news for this week is the fantastic publication of the largest known bird of prey from Australia, a giant new raptor named Dinatoitus gaffi. Fossils of this bird were actually first uncovered in the 50s and 60s from a site in South Australia dating to the Pleistocene Epoch, and then an expedition back to this site in 2021 uncovered more material from the same individual. Analyzing fossils in other collections, paleontologists then realized that they had even more material belonging to this new undescribed species, and so they've now named it as Dinatoitis. Phylogenetic analysis of its evolutionary placement shows that it's the sister group to the Igipiani, a subfamily of birds of prey known as Old World vultures. But the robust, eagle-like anatomy of Dinatoitis's legs indicate that this animal was a predator, not just a scavenger, probably behaving in a similar way to the Philippine eagle. It's also the largest bird of prey known to have inhabited Australia, with a wingspan reaching 3 meters, and possessing enormous talons. In Australasia as a whole, only female Hast's eagles of New Zealand are known to have been bigger. Presumably, Dinatoitis would have been the top avian predator of Australia during the Pleistocene, and it likely ranged from far inland all the way to the coast based on where fossils have been found. Dinatoitis probably went extinct during the megafaunal mass extinction of Australia, which reached its worst about 50,000 years ago. An absolutely stunning new discovery then. Also in the news is an interesting study that has re-examined the exceptionally long-necked sauropod dinosaur Memenchisaurus from East Asia. The paleontologists have not only sorted out its evolutionary relationships and better defined various features of the bones that allow this dinosaur to be distinguished from other relatives, but they also investigated just how the massive, more than 14 meter long neck evolved. Well, it's due to a combined effect of very long cervical ribs, extensions of the vertebrae that jut out and extend backwards, and other structural modifications of the vertebrae, creating a mechanically stable environment that then allows pneumatization, air pockets in the bones, to develop extensively and make the bones lighter and stronger. In fact, the majority of the volume of the vertebrae was air, as the paleontologists discovered by CT scanning the bones. So some pretty fantastic adaptations to allow such an extreme morphology to evolve, revealing how some sauropods managed to get such ridiculously long necks. Back to Doug in the studio. And that's it from us this week. I do hope you've enjoyed Seven Days of Science. And as always,